So not too far back, I did a little experimenting, did some research uh, with some online tutorials on how I could do my own simulated Bakelite finish on magazines and some other accessories. It's referred to as fake light. So this was one of the magazines I did here. Uh, this is an X-Tech mag uh, that I was running in my Draco build with the JMAC MMS handguard on it. And I got a lot of feedback from y'all asking for a DIY video. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today in this video, how we can uh, kind of recreate this and some similar designs because when it comes to fake light, we got a lot of uh, room for creativity. All right, there's a lot we can do here. You can see this one kind of has like a speckled finish. We can also do uh, more of like the lines that you see on a lot of bake light. Um, and the good part about this is it's really hard to, to mess it up too bad because bake light, it's not, the bake light mags aren't, they don't need to be perfect, all right? And then with this pattern especially, it's hard to see some of those imperfections. But ultimately this is just a fun little project that uh, aesthetically is gonna look cool. And uh, for some of you that kind of got into the game a little bit late and weren't able to get your hands on some real Bakelite, then uh, this might be your only option at the time. Or maybe you live in a band state where you can only have 10, 15 round magazines. You can make those rounds look like bake ma Bakelite mags instead of ruining a 30 round Bakelite mag to make it limited capacity. So uh, for this, pretty simple. First off, you're gonna need a magazine, obviously. Uh, it doesn't really matter which type you use. The smoother the magazine uh, will work better for more of the lines, where if you get something like this X-Tech mag that has a lot of ridges, the speckled look is going to uh, usually turn out a little bit better. And I'm gonna cover both of those today. So the first thing we're gonna do with our mag is we need to disassemble the body and remove the guts. All right, that's pretty simple. We're gonna set that aside. I typically do not paint the base plate. I like that that two-tone finish, but if you wanna do the base plate, feel free. So once you get your mag disassembled, we can go and uh, we're gonna clean it up real good. All right, so you're just gonna need some degreaser, bucket of water, and uh, scrub it down, make sure there's no dirt, dust, or brie, oils, uh, grease, anything like that on the outside of the magazine body. All right, so I've got my degreaser here, just some, some Dawn dish soap, it's gonna work just fine. Let's just spray some of that in there, boom and then add some water. All right, so I got a nice uh, like brish bristle brush here. Uh, these work pretty good, almost like a shoe polish kind of brush. Uh, that's gonna work really good to scrub out all the nicks and crannies on your mag body. If you have a brand new magazine, which these are all brand new AC Unity mags I'm going to be using today, um, I'd still recommend giving them a wipe down because um, due to the, from the manufacturing process, there can be some uh, oils or grease on that magazine, depending on uh, oftentimes when they package them, they're going to uh, add a little bit of grease to uh, keep any of the metal components from from rusting, corroding, anything like that. You could do this with steel mags as well. I'd also recommend uh, cleaning the magazine bodies uh, just to make sure that that paint adheres uh, pretty decently. Rinse off some of this. All right, so I'm gonna set these mag bodies out in the sun and let them dry. All right, so uh, mag bodies are all dry and ready to go. Didn't take long out here in the Arizona heat. Um, the hotter it is, and usually uh, it's easier uh, to rattle can or spray paint something out when it's hotter outside, so that helps. It seems like it cures a little bit better, cures quicker, um, so there's that. All right, so in addition to our mag bodies, we're gonna need spray paint. All right, this particular mag I did with this uh, Rust-Oleum Satin Warm Caramel, caramel, however you want to pronounce that. All right, um, so that got me that um, result. I'm gonna try a few others just for fun. 
different colors. You can try whatever you want. Um, and in combination with the spray paint, we're gonna use some, some of this uh, stain as well. That stain is gonna give us the, the, um, the fake light or the baked light texture, okay? So um, for, for this one, I used this uh, special walnut wood stain. Uh, I don't know how much it matters. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna change it a little bit, but this is just what I happen to have on hand, so I'm gonna use that. I might try out some of this espresso as well on some of the darker colors, just to see if it gives it a little bit more contrast. And I'm gonna try to see if I can pick up some black stain as well, because um, I'm gonna do a few different colors here, just just for the fun of it. But ultimately, um, I am gonna show you how to come up with this look here that I had on that Draco. All right, so uh, in order to paint our mag body, uh, it helps to have like a furring strip because you can go ahead and shove that up in there and you got this hands-free kind of system for, uh, for painting. And then you can also leave it on there while it dries, which is nice as well. You either stick it in something or like I'll probably do is I'll just kind of hang it off this table and put a piece of wood on the end of it so it don't fall off. So. I'm uh, probably going to do about mm, two or so coats of this satin followed by some stain and then at the end we're going to finish it off with some clear coat because this stain does not cure like the spray paint does and it's a little bit easy for that to rub off so ultimately we're going to hit it with with some some clear stain at the end depending on how shiny or dull you want it uh, a lot of that's going to come from your clear coat if you use a clear coat. So this is a matte clear coat. You can go with a, a satin, gloss, semi-gloss, high gloss, whatever your flavor is. All right, so we're going to throw some uh, spray paint on this mag and these other mags and uh, let them sit for a bit and hit it with a second layer. And I am not going to be taping anything off, uh, so I'm just going to be hitting it. Um, just try not to gum up the inside of the mag too much. This is that warm caramel. All right, that's my first coat there. And uh, this will probably dry in this weather. It's uh, triple digits here in Arizona. It'll probably dry, be ready for the next coat by the time I'm done with the other, the other magazines. All right, so here we go for that second coat of the warm caramel caramel. I don't know. All right, uh, and that's it. On your on your second coat, you want to make sure that there's no black showing through or very little. Again, it does not have to be perfect with these uh, fake light mags because we're going to be adding that texture. But you want to get a good base layer in there um, because that's going to to ultimately give it the color that it's going to have. Now it's going to change a little bit once we add um, that stain, but um, you want to make sure you got a good base layer, two or three coats. I'm pretty happy with two coats. That's going to work fine for me. I'm going to let that dry come back later and then uh, we'll hit it with some of the stain. All right, so here we are. These mags have had plenty of time to dry. They've been out in the Arizona sun and uh, we're ready to apply the texture using this stain i'm using a special walnut wood stain here and um, i'm going to apply it in two different ways to show you a couple different results that we can get with these so i the two mags i got this uh, darker one here it's finished in the warm caramel rust-oleum and then this brighter orange one here is in the satin spiced amber all right so uh, we're going to switch the camera around so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better and we're going to go ahead and apply the stain using just a chip brush. These are I got these from the dollar store. It's a two inch chip brush. It's cost 50 cents or I'm sorry, $1.25 for two of them. So about 50, 75 cents each. Um, and these bristles, these coarse bristles will help um, create some of that texture as well. The only issue I have with these is sometimes the bristles break off and they could get into the finish if that's something you're worried about, then I'd recommend spending a little bit more on a nicer brush, but this is gonna work just fine for my purposes. All right, so I'm gonna be starting off uh, with this darker one here, and I'm gonna go for that more 
of the um, traditional bake light with with the with the kind of stripes going on there. All right. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just start dabbing some of this um, stain onto the brush. All right, and then we can kind of start working it onto the mag. All right. Now, I kind of experimented with this a little bit outside, and in the heat, this stain is a lot more difficult to work with. Um, so here in the garage, a little bit more cool down. It's a little bit later in the day. It's going to be a lot easier um, for me to kind of manipulate this, get these lines how I want them to be on here. Um, another thing I noticed too is uh, I painted a few different mags. I used a variety of spray paint that I had sitting around in the garage here and I found that the ultra matte spray paint like the stuff used in the uh, the Rust-Oleum Camel spray paint that stuff um, that spray paint absorbs this stain far too rapidly to the point where you're practically just painting the mag with the stain and um, doesn't work too good. So definitely want to use a satin uh, type of paint, something that um, would be a little bit more easy to work with. All right, so I'm just working this on here. All right, getting it in place and then before I'm done, I'm gonna work on making sure that that texture is there, all right? So if you put a little bit too much on, it's okay, kind of just spread it around. Spread it around, get it to where it needs to go. Kind of wipe some ex excess off, all right, if needed. All right, try to get in the nooks. All the nooks and crannies, we don't want any, we don't want there to be large gaps. Kind of will take away the, the magic of the fake light. So, I want to keep it fairly consistent. All right, and once we get all those spots plugged up, now we can work on texturing, okay? So, See how it looks there. I'm gonna go ahead and start kind of painting lines on with this brush. Actually, I'm gonna to try to start from the top more so. Okay. If you have a Bakelite mag you wanna reference, kind of use that as well. Kind of play with it a little bit. See what you like. All right, a little bit of arts and crafts. And you can kind of see how that is looking there. Same thing on the spine. Now we don't want the lines to look too consistent, too planned. Just kind of throw, this, throw them in there. All right, coming together. All right, let's see, kind of see here, let's see if I can get this. One. A little bit better lighting. All right. Now this part up here, you can make it look as nice as you want, but when that's inserted into the fire, we're not going to see that. All right, kind of as it's dry, I'm just kind of playing around with it a little bit. And that is looking pretty good on that mag. All right. And 
now let's switch over to the other mag. All right, so for this mag, I'm gonna be going for more of that speckle look. So I'm gonna be using this bag to get me some texture. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the stain. Make sure again, it gets in all the nooks. All right, especially with this really bright mag, I don't want it to stand out a whole lot. I don't want it to be bright orange, too bright orange. I don't want it to look like the, uh, like that Tapco fake light color they came out, which is basically like a yellow, kind of almost like how this paint is without any stain on it. All right, so I'm just gonna get that on. Kind of dab it in place. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now what I like to do with this is I'm just gonna throw a couple darker spots in here where this, where I can kind of work in this stain with the bag because I, again, I don't want it to look too consistent, too planned. All right, that looks pretty good maybe. Throw a couple on the spine, a couple on the front there. And uh, we'll start dabbing it with this bag, see how it starts to come out. All right. Take some of that plastic there, and there it is. All right, so you can kind of see that coming together already. and uh, that's pretty much it for that. And you can kind of see how that looks, a little flaked or, or speckled, whatever you want to call it, just giving it that texture. And I think this lighter color mag actually takes the, the stain a little bit better. Um, of course, it's gonna be a little bit brighter when, it, when it's finished, but I think it looks pretty, pretty good there. All right, so the mag has sat overnight with the stain on it. You can see it a little bit better in the light there. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna be hitting it with the clear. All right, so I'm using a Rust-Oleum matte clear. If you want it to be shiny, if you want it to gloss, or even have a finish similar to this, you're gonna to wanna to use uh, either a satin or a semi-gloss clear coat. Uh, but I'm going for that matte look uh, at the end. So I'm just gonna hit it with about three coats of this Rust-Oleum and the coats are going to be uh, very light. If you put too much on at once, it'll cause the uh, spray paint on there to start basically peeling away um, due to the ingredients in here, which has acetone in it. All right, so if you put too much acetone, it's gonna start stripping it. So a few clear uh, coats. I'm gonna put a little bit, give it about 10, 15 minutes and then do two more, all right? And that's it. So two more of those, and then uh, I'll be back after these have sat uh, at least for 24 hours. All right, so uh, I applied three to four coats on the mags. Uh, yesterday and everything is uh, reassembled and ready to go. So here's the results First up we have the lighter colored magazine with the 
uh, the speckling technique. I'll upload some pictures so you can see a little bit uh, better. And then also I have the, uh, the darker mags with the lines, a little bit more traditional fake light. So both of them turned out pretty good. A um, uh, quick recap here for the lighter color. I use this Satin Spice Amber Krylon. For the darker color, I used a Warm Caramel Rust-Oleum. Those are the base coats. I used this uh, Wood Stain Special Walnut Varathane brand um, to texture these two magazines, and I finished them up with the Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. All right, three, three or four light coats of that just to seal in that stain. Uh, so apparent came out pretty good, pretty cool looking. Um, of course, when you do this yourself, you can feel free to experiment. Just experiment with different base colors. Um, these work out pretty good for me. Uh, if you wanna go with something that maybe has a little bit more red in there, different variations of orange, it's all gonna give you a slightly different outcome. Um, and that's it. So let me know what you think down in the comments below and thanks for watching.